Amen. Okay? Of the synagogue, which is called um, of the Libertines and the Cyrenians mm -hmm. and the Alexandrians. Read on, brother. And of them, Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Who were they disputing with? Stephen. Now, we know that Stephen was a man of God Amen. in the assemblies. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And we know that Stephen was a Jew. Amen. Is that right? So who are all the rest of these other people that are disputing with Stephen in the synagogue? You see, from the outset, it would, it would have you to almost believe that these are people of different countries and different nations, and they are not of the, the diaspora of Israel. But when you look behind the word and the meaning of it, yeah. and you'll find out that the Greeks were not going to go into the synagogue because they were interested in God. They had their own culture they was interested in. Mm -hmm. But the children of Israel who were scattered out among the heathen were the ones that were inside the synagogue. So, Libertine. And I'll read you the definition. It's 30, 32 in the Strongs. And it says, one who has, liberated, who has been liberated from slavery, a free man, or the son of a free man, a Libertine, denotes, look at this, Jews. So a lot of times when you're reading the scripture and you think that it's talking about another nation, another country, what it's talking about is it's kind of like us. Uh, I'll give you a term that we use, and I'll let you a little bit in on some more of this book of law I'm adding to it. Um, you know, we take on many different titles mm -hmm. when we are in bondage mm -hmm. in another country. And make no doubt about it, we are in bondage. Oh, yeah. Amen. Um, the Bible, a matter of fact... Um, says over in Deuteronomy that I will bring you into Egypt again. And according to the commandment we just read in Exodus 20 verse 2, he calls Egypt the house of bondage. Amen. So Egypt is the house of bondage. Amen. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And of course, and the, uh, the color people over here in America, they give us the title African American. And what they're doing is denoting an ethnicity an identity that is associated um, with the land you come from, and then they throw on the Americans at the end of it to, I guess, so you don't be left out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah am I making any sense? Uh -huh. <laughs> and so that's the same spirit that was going on with here. There may have been some Jews that was called libertines, but they were Jewish also. They were Jews, if you understand what I mean. Right. Or they were the people of Israel because they had been taken from their homeland, dispersed and scattered like the prophecies had already said. Amen. You understand what I mean? So they had what you will call a dual citizenship. Right. <laughs> is that making sense? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. All right. But it says, now this is according to Philo, which is a historian. So, but all I'm doing is I'm reading the actual definitions uh, that comes from Strong's itself, who had been made captives on of uh, the Romans by Pompey, uh, but were afterwards set free. And who, although they had fixed their abode in Rome, they had fixed their abode in Rome, had built their own expense, a synagogue, at their own expense, they built a synagogue at Jerusalem, uh, which they frequently, uh, which they frequent when in that city. So the, the name of the Libertines uh, adhere to them to distinguish them from freeborn Jews who had subsequently taken, off the re taken up their residence at Rome. Evidence seems to have been discovered of the existence of the synagogue of the Libertines at Pompeii. So there you have it. Mm -hmm. Now when you go to the Cyrenians, that's number 29 of 57, and of course, a Cyrenian uh, means supremacy of the bridal, at least that's what they're telling us right here, in the principal part of northern Africa, uh, which was anciently called Cyrenia. Cyrenia is a, oh boy, that's a name. <laughs> Lying between Carthage and Egypt, and corresponding in the modern tripoil, who, uh, although on the African coast, it was a Greek city hmm. and the Jews were settled there in large numbers. Wow. Y'all hearing this? Yeah. 
And the reason why we're bringing this out, even the more so, brothers and sisters, because so you can see how that the prophecy that God had already told Abraham that, that his seed would be as the number of the sand. His, I mean, his seed would be scattered and it would be as number of the sands of the sea. Because there's no way you, that prophecy could be fulfilled if it just stuck with just one people in general. Right. Amen. Do you understand what I mean? And we know seed coming from the seed of the man. Or is that right? Amen. All right. Uh, the Greek concept, um, colonization of the part of Africa under Bactus began as early as 60, 631 B.C. after the death of Alexander the Great. And we know what happened with Alexander the Great and what he did with his generals. Mm -hmm. um, dependency upon Egypt and Roman providence. All right? And it goes on and on and on. Uh, and it, it, it talks about Simon who bore the Savior's cross. Uh, a native of Cyrenian, Jewish dwellers in Cyrenia, um, where in Jerusalem, at, they were there at Pentecost, and they gave their name in one of the synagogues in Jerusalem again. The converts of Cyrene were among those who were first contributed actively um, to the formation of the first Gentile church at Antioch. Wow. See, the Greeks didn't have churches. No. Synagogues. They had temples oh, yeah. where they worship their gods. Amen. All right, so then we go on down to the next word, the Alexandrians. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is interesting. This one is very interesting because it's, it's, it's numbered 221, and it says, look at this, a native or residence of Alexandria in Egypt. And, of course, then you go up there and you see all these words omitted, 